If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question yourself before listening on. In this question, the storm cloud is essentially acting as a capacitor. And what that means is that it's storing a certain amount of charge and then it's releasing that charge in the form of energy. Now the amount of energy that the storm cloud is storing is equal to one half times the charge times the potential difference. The question gives us directly the potential difference as well as the amount of charge. The only thing we have to be careful about is that only 1% of this energy is actually being absorbed by the tree. So what we'll do is take that energy and multiply it by 1%, which is 0.01, it's expressed as a decimal. So we'll go ahead and fill in the known values for the charge and the potential difference. And when we compute that, we should get 2.5 times 10 to the power of 7 joules. This is the amount of energy that's going to be absorbed by the water present in the tree. Now, we'll notice that the water begins at 30 degrees Celsius. And the question is asking us how much of this water can be boiled away. Well, in order to boil water, we first have to raise the temperature of the water from 30 degrees Celsius up to the boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And that's going to require energy in the form of mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. Once the water reaches that temperature, then it will begin to sort of boil off into the atmosphere. And in that case, the amount of energy required to boil off the water is the mass times the latent heat of vaporization. So what this means is that we have to take the total amount of energy that we just calculated and set it equal to, d to these two different forms of energy. The mc delta t, which again is required to raise the temperature of the water up to the boiling point, and then the m times the latent heat of vaporization, which is the energy required to actually boil the water. Now we can see that a factor of m is present in both terms, so we can factor that out, and that would leave us with c delta t plus the latent heat of vaporization. We're trying to solve for the mass of water, so we can divide both sides of the equation by this term in parentheses. Now luckily the specific heat, which is represented by the letter C, the change in temperature, and the latent heat of vaporization are given to us in the standard units. Let's just not forget that with change in temperature we have to do the final temperature of 100 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So with that idea in mind, we'll go ahead and plug in these known values in the denominator. And when you carefully plug that entire expression into your calculator, you should get approximately 9.79, and then the standard unit of mass will be kilograms. So this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.